Good morning, Beulah. Earlier this week, we watched an old favourite film together again, The Lion King. And although it's an animation, we we just love it, and we we love watching it together and singing along to all the familiar songs. But this time, the part where young Simba looks in his, at his reflection in the water, it, it just touched me deeply. In that moment, he realizes his worth and responsibility, uh, his inheritance as heir. And um, he imagines his father, Mufasa, saying, remember who you are. And it touched me because we can relate. We too have to remember who we are. God's children, his heirs, his heirs. And according to God's precious word, if you belong to Jesus Christ, you've already been transformed into God's treasure. You are already the closest family. Romans 8.17 says, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs of Jesus Wow, really powerful. But we have to flip the phrase upside down and remember who God is. Who is God that, that we should seek him first? And while respectful men and women may be scared to voice such questions aloud, scripture is not the least bit reluctant to offer answers. God tells us exactly who he is. He does not call us to worship and serve ignorantly and then stumble before him blindly. Psalm, Psalm 123 falls into the genre of, of songs of lament, but the focus is on God himself. And the first question today is, where are we looking are we looking at a reflection in the water, like young Simba, or are we looking to the one true king? Right now, in the challenge that surrounds us and, and, and all that busies us or injures us, where are we looking? Where are our attentions focus? Let us plunge beneath our spiritual answers to what is true. When every natural instinct uh, begs us to stare wide-eyed in the face of our circumstances, our demands, oppressors, what or what or who ultimately wins our focus. These questions are vital because much of our soul's basic welfare is wrapped in our answers. Let us read Psalm. 123. I lift my eyes to you, the one enthroned in heaven, like a servant's eyes on his master's hand, like a servant girl's eyes on her mistress's hand. So our eyes are on the Lord our God until he shows us favour. Show us favour, Lord, show us favour, for we've had more than enough contempt. We've had more than enough scorn from the arrogant and contempt from the proud. Psalm 123 verse 1 intimates uh, that one chief reason God is worthy of being the one to whom we lift our eyes and fix our focus because he is enthroned in heaven, enthroned on high. And, and between the cherubim, God rules over the entire universe. He can't be enthroned without a throne. Like the 24 elders uh, in Revelation 4 verse 10 and 11, ultimately every other crown bearer will fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. 
they will lay down their crowns before the throne and say, you are worthy, our Lord and God. Nothing, nothing operates outside God's sovereign rule, including any prince or principality of earth and air. And these are but a few of the reasons why he is so worthy of our fixed attentions. Everything else will downsize into its proper place when we look to God alone. And just as God is enthroned over the flood, he is enthroned over everything that troubles us. We most certainly feel the pain of the world's contempt. But and how do we keep from either adopting its views or becoming resentful and withdrawn? We must lift our eyes to God. It is more than, than, than simply taking a look. It denotes a steady, reflecting, adoring gaze filled with longing and desire. The psalmist focuses both his attention um, and the yearnings of his heart on God in prayer. He, he became like a domestic servant, trained to respond to every indication of his master's will. He overcomes all distractions and makes knowing um, God and serving God obediently the main business of his life. The main focus. Let us focus on him. And in, re in remembering who he is, we'll remember who we are in Christ. Let us pray. O oh Lord, you are the Holy One and you are alertly and lovingly enthroned over every situation, every trouble, every challenge or problem that we face. Lord, you are the Creator God, the, the great King upon the throne, Creator of heaven and earth. You are the God of Exodus and, and Easter, the God of Calvary. We look up to you, Lord. And we humbly thank you that you are ever willing to use your great power on behalf of your children. Thank you, Lord, for your limitless capacity to love and to nurture and to watch over us. And thank you, Christ Jesus, that you attend to each and every one of us individually as if we are the only one in the world. Amen. Enjoy your day.